Nadia Cassini was born on January 2, 1949, the daughter of a German-American Harrison Muller Sr., 1929-1998, and an Italian-American, professional dancers and actors who met while touring in Woodstock, in the state of New York. She leads her young family and travels abroad, working as an exotic dancer. She had relations with many rich men, including Georges Simonon. She moved to Italy in 1968. She landed her first film roles in 1970 and performed her first leading role in La Passa di Du Vice by Piero Vivarelli. Nadia Cassini married in 1969 Igor Cassini, an American journalist from Russian and Italian nobility, brother of designer Oleg Cassini. They divorced in 1972 and she moved to London with her boyfriend, Greek actor Yorgo Voyages. Their daughter Cassandra was born in 1977. Nadia Cassini returned to the cinema a year later in 1978. She achieved great success in Italian sexy comedy in a series of films with Lino Banfi between 1979 and 1980. These are my top 10 movies for Nadia Cassini, and please excuse my Italian pronunciation. At number 10. Emmanuel Silver Tongue, 1976. On the Mediterranean shores of Africa, Billy who is in love with the beautiful Andrea rushes to the airport for her arrival, returning from Paris with her husband. However, Billy's happiness immediately breaks when he learns that he must stay at his house, at the request of Andrea, Bobby, Andrea's lover, and Dr. Emmanuel, Bobby's friend, who will try in vain to cure him of his irrepressible desire to be a woman, indulging himself in him, after having hypnotized him. After realizing that Bobby wasn't the right man for her, Andrea falls in love with Billy. At number 9. Io Zombo, 2 Zombie, Lay Zomba, 1979. An undertaker, Renzo Montagnini, unintentionally raises three accident victims from the dead while reading out loud from a zombie pulp novel. He dies of a heart attack, but the zombies then turn around raise him with the same book, and the four of them shamble off looking for food. After unsuccessfully trying to prey on passing motorists, they end up at an inn owned by the aunt of one of the men. After accidentally giving her a heart attack, they take over the inn and try to dine on the guests, but their plans go hilariously awry, as the movie turns into a parody of Night of the Living Dead, its sequel, an Italian co-production, Dawn of the Dead, as well as such classics as Dead of Night and even The Wizard of Oz. At number 8. Lamonte Tutta Prior, 1981. Two crooks, one is called Erica, young and charming, while the other is Giorgio, less handsome and more aggressive, are hired by a rich lady to get rid of her husband, an opportunist and unrepentant womanizer. Everything is complicated by a third couple, Bombolo and his friend Gatano, who are instead looking for a ticket that has ended up in the hands of the two scammers. Obviously, to get closer to Erica and thus recover the document, the two men will have to disguise themselves and pretend to be two women in their 60s with a curriculum as a masseuse. At number 7. When Men Carried Clubs and Women Played Ding Dong, 1971. Prehistoric cave stud Ari wins lovely virgin Lystra in a pig catching contest, but their attempts at ding dong keep getting interrupted by idiot battles between his tribe, the cave dwellers, and their neighbors, the lake dwellers. Annoyed that hubby would rather make war than ding dong, Lystra organizes the women of both tribes to go on strike and abstain ding dong until the men stop fighting. It all happens back in the days when men carried clubs and women played Ding Dong, an Italian Stone Age sex comedy based on the Greek classic Lysistrata, and filled with shapely cavewomen sporting 70s hairstyles, a gay caveman with the hots for the hero, a title tune that will follow you forever, and, of course, plenty of old-fashioned Ding Dong. At number 6. L'Assistente Social Tutto Pepe, 1981. Nadia is a social worker who is trying to keep the residents of a local slum in line. Unfortunately, she keeps neglecting her work and fantasizing about life as a pop star. When she falls for one of the residents in question, a small-time crook called Bellamy, she ends up an accomplice in a convoluted heist involving a holy Catholic relic. At number 5. Giovanni, Bell, Probablemente Rick, 1982. Claudia, Russo, Rita, Cassini, and Caterina, Hardiman, are three friends who live in a conservative Italian town and lead seemingly neat and respectable married lives. One day, they are summoned to the notary public's office and learn that Anna, one of their peers in high school who got a bad name as a whore in the town because of them and was forced to leave is now dead. 
Furthermore, she had amassed a great fortune abroad and decided to bequeath it to the three. However, she has a strange condition. They should cheat on their husbands within three days and provide photographic evidence, or else the inheritance will be donated to the retirement home. At number 4. Linsignante Bala, Con Tutta La Class, 1979. Girls dance instructor Claudia Gambetti takes over the boys' gym class after gym teacher Martorelli breaks both his legs owing to one of his students' pranks. Soon both teachers and students are interested in learning more of Claudia's athletic dance moves. Director Fiorentori has made some debts betting on horses and wants Claudia to win a disco competition to balance the school budget too. When the boys' teams are invited to face off against their superior Russian counterparts, Claudia calls in her dancing girls to be used as a secret weapon. At number 3. Il Dio Serpente, 1970. Paola is in a deteriorating marriage with Bernard. After they move to an island in the Caribbean, she befriends a local woman named Stella who introduces her to the cult of the serpent god Jambala. She, first despising the rituals of the cult, soon realizes that they represent the passion and lust lacking in her married life. At a ritual where reality is interspersed within fantasy, she has sex with a strong black man Jambala, and she identifies with the serpent god himself. At number 2. La Dottoressa Sai Stockol Colonello, 1980. Colonel Anacleto Punzan, Banfi, is a military doctor with expertise in organ transplantation. Falls in love with Dr. Eve Russell, specializing in transplants. Thinking that his manhood is not adequate for the beautiful colleague, decides to do a transplant with the unsuspecting nurse. He has a small penis, leading to a frustrated sex life with his wife Giovanna, Melissa Longo. Furthermore, his penis size forces him to dodge sexual advances from an attractive colleague. At number 1. The Nurse in the Military Madhouse, 1979. Grazia Mancini, Nadia Cassini, is an aspiring nightclub singer. Her boss Eva, Karen Schubert, has a lover, John, Elio Zamuto, who is a trafficker of stolen artworks. The two learn of valuable paintings hidden in a military mental asylum managed by mentally unstable professor Emidio La Russa, Lino Banfi. Dici, infatti io ci provo perché ho smesso di mettere i tacchi, vado in giro con i piedi per terra, proprio... Senza tacchi. E infatti quest'anno devo dire che se Nadia Cassini era brava in passato, quest'anno ha dimostrato un senso dell'umorismo che prima non conoscevamo. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Please stay tuned for more videos and don't forget to subscribe and share. Enjoy.